joined by Anthony Burchak, who's going to be fighting this Saturday at Combate 24 against Adam Martinez. Anthony, what's going on, man? How are you? What is up, James Lynch? How's it going, dog? Uh, it's going well, man. It's good to talk to you again. You know, we've been doing interviews for a couple of years now, so it's great to see you back in the cage. And, uh, you know, you haven't fought at all this year. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a while since we've seen you in the cage. What's been the reason for the layoff? Um, you know what, man? It was just really hard finding matchups coming back from Japan. Um, I thought maybe being 0-3 in my last three fights would have uh, would have been easy for uh, an easy sell for somebody, you know. Maybe a promoter says, "Hey, he's slipping. You might want to take him now," you know. But it wasn't it wasn't like that. It was. I think people saw the videos, and and watched my Ryzen fights and really saw that I really wasn't losing those fights, um, especially the fight against Kawajiri, which was against a much bigger, much heavier, much more seasoned opponent. Um, you know, on the all-time uh, top 100 greatest fighters of all time list. So, um, for me, me not to be mounted by him. And, and not get finished like a, a lot of people do. Do you know his finish rate for Mount is 98%? That's, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's something I found out. So for me to be able to, um, you know, to tout that, that I didn't get finished by the Crusher and, uh, you know, the other two fights in the Grand Prix were, were razor thin. And if you look at, at what I was doing, I was controlling the fights. I was landing the more devastating punches. I was getting the takedowns. I was looking for submissions. So... You know, I understand the Japanese people judge the fight as a whole. Um, but in my post-fight interviews, you know, I was trying to tell them, if, if you cut a pie into two-thirds and I eat two, two out of three of those slices, whose pie is that? You know, okay. so it kind of looked dumbfounded when I, when I asked that question. And maybe it, maybe it resonated with them, maybe it didn't. But, um, yeah, I mean, the layoff has just kind of been something for me which was forcing me to get back to my roots, which was wrestling and, and grappling and jujitsu. And, um, you know, I won the USA men's wrestling national championship for USA wrestling, um, at 70 kilos, which is two weight classes above what I normally compete at in wrestling. Um, I won the Arizona Brazilian jiu-jitsu state championship, um, took second at the honored invitational. Uh, I won the bullpen submission series here in Tucson. Um, it, it, it just, it was a nonstop flow of just ability to grapple. And uh, I was making a lot more money off of super fights, selling sponsorships on my shorts. So, I mean, not getting punched, not getting, you know, kicked and, and taking all that damage just to do some submission only jujitsu was, was kind of what I was focusing on. And here you are, you got a big fight here coming up for Combate. How did this all come together with you, uh, you know, competing for them? Um, so they, I knew about this probably about, 10 or 12 weeks in advance and around 10 weeks is when I started getting into like fight camp you know what I mean and, and it was just so hard for them to still find me an opponent up until about four weeks out um, you know they finally landed me Adam Martinez and I looked up who he was and I was I was fortunate to actually find a good amount of footage on him and and how he acts and what he likes to do and um, you know I'm, I'm really blessed that he took this fight because it's not every day or every even every month that a major organization like Combate comes to comes to Tucson, Arizona. So, um, you know, I jumped at the chance to fight at home in front of my friends, fans, the family again. This has been a, an eight-year homecoming, so it's it's really big to me. And you must be pretty stoked as well. Now you're the co-main event with the main event getting canceled. Yeah, I mean, uh, Amanda Serrano just had her birthday yesterday. She turned 30. Uh, they bumped her up to the main event, and I'm, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even phased by it at all. Um, you know, I'm not greedy. Being the co-main event in my own hometown is, is still something amazing. I'll be able to sit back and watch her do work. Uh, she's been training with us here at 10th Planet Tucson and, and my gym, Toro Tech Mixed Martial Arts. Um, so for her to be able to just to watch someone so crisp in the boxing world start making transitions and really seeing how good her jiu-jitsu is um, was, uh, was, was pretty refreshing. So... Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to, you know, kicking off the night as the co-main event and then trailing right into her main event. So I have no problem being the opening act. How much do you feel like your experience will play into this fight? Uh, you fought in the UFC. You were the MFC champ. Always got to give a shout-out to MFC because that uh, that's when I remember seeing you. Got to give time. a shout-out to MFC and Mark Pavlich, man. You got yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, but how much do you feel like that will play a role in this fight? Because Martinez only has six pro fights. You know, he, he took out an Olympic uh, silver medalist um, with that Michael kid in, in LFA. 
um, who's now fighting for the flyweight championship. But um, I think the composure, I think the the patience, um, and I think my overall fight IQ is just far greater than him. Um, you know, I fought Kawajiri. I fought Thomas Almeida. I fought Joe Soto. Uh, you know, the names are out there. I'm not saying that he's a slouch because he's a very, very resilient, very tough Mexican-American fighter. He likes to come forward like I do. Um, he throws some crazy spinning shit. Like, he'll, you know, he's, he's unpredictable. And he ended up catching that Olympian uh, wrestler in, in a guillotine. So, you know, I've been practicing my, my you know, submission defenses. And, and I actually got caught in a really deep guillotine in my last uh, super fight against a black belt. Um, and I worked my way out. And then I, I shortly submitted him, you know, right after that. But, um, you know, I just think my, my pace... My level changes, my my dynamic striking, my wrestling, and my jiu-jitsu, I think it's just too much for him to, to weather. Um, with that resilience that he has, uh, he does take a lot of damage, and he's letting little 25ers hit him. You know, he's he's not ready for the amount of power and speed that I'm about to bring. Who have been some of your main training partners for this camp? You know what, man? I haven't gone anywhere. I stayed at home. I stayed at home. I had... Um, Brought one of my one of my teammates, and he's my coach, uh, Rene Leon. He's a young, uh, 25, 26 year old fighter. He's fought for Lion fights. Um, he's either 11 and 0 or 12 and 0 in Muay Thai. He's been coming down from Phoenix to hold pads for me. I've been driving up, you know, two days a week to go up there and get, you know, pads. But, uh, you know, my teammates here at Tucson, the guys that I teach, the guys that know my style, um, you know, those are the guys that have been pushing me. You know, my, my 205-er, Willie Otterfree, my 185-er, Dion Clash. Um, I just got this new stud from Texas out of Dark Clan Jiu-Jitsu under Toby Amata. Um, his name's Andrew Slater. He's been pushing me. So uh, he's a 155-er. So I've been, you know, I've been fortunate to kind of – I've always went away from, from the distractions. And really, I just read an article about being comfortable and, and really immersing yourself in the distractions to become – uh, a much more well-rounded fighter in person and really, uh, you know, taking those kind of things on the chin and, and um, you know, it inspires them. They, they train alongside me and it makes them push harder. So I got to thank all my teammates here in Tucson. Um, you know, I got so many guys from out of, out of our gym, like from Undisputed under David Riley. Um, Gracie Baja has gotten some guys that have come in and given me good jiu-jitsu rounds. Uh, inverse jiu-jitsu guys have come in here. So, the community as a whole, knowing that I'm coming back and I'm fighting in my backyard, our open mats have been like 40 to 50 people deep. I'm getting high-level rounds. You know, I got a tough brown belt here named Jason Contreras that, that continuously pushes me. Um, and then the Contreras brothers, Freddie and David, who are pro MMA fighters themselves, they come and give me that, that wrestling jiu-jitsu look. So all the things that I've always tried to get away from and, and you know, limit the distractions up by going to extreme couture and and going to Las Vegas, um, you know, I just took a step back and, and I was looking at where was I most successful? I was most successful when I was grinding at home, you know, with my wife, my kids, everybody by my side. So, um, you know, I really brought it back to my roots and, and uh, finishing up camp here with, with all the students that I train. I love hearing that. Uh, what is your status right now? Like, are you on a multi-fight deal with Combate or are you a free agent? Like, what, what sort of... No, the, I'm a free agent. I signed a, I signed a one-fight deal simply because they're in my backyard. Um, you know, I, I really... I really believe I belong, you know, in big shows like Bellator or the UFC. I'm not saying that Combate isn't a big show. It's just, you know, the, the global travel. And, and um, you know, I want to get back to Ryzen, leaving Japan at 0-3 with, with, you know, not a win under my belt, left a really bad taste in my mouth. So uh, I'd really like to get back there and, and rattle off a good win in front of the Japanese fans. We're looking forward to your homecoming coming up here this Saturday, Combate 24. Uh, Anthony, it's always a pleasure catching up with you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. For sure. Thank you guys so much. Uh, please follow me at A Burchak MMA on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, my Facebook fan page is just Anthony Burchak, B I R C H A K. Um, I got to thank On It, uh, Zypos Training and Tactical, uh, Clayton Jones Photography. Um, Desert Toyota of Tucson, they hooked me up with a dope car. Uh, so they've been really just helping me anytime I'm travel training or I'm going out to Austin for the Honored Invitational. They've been, uh, you know, giving me one of their new 2018 rides. So this, uh, this week they hooked me up with the, the Toyota CHR, uh, cool little sports car. So I really got to thank them. Um, and then uh, 
all my local sponsors, man, um, everybody that's helped me out. Uh, thank you guys so, so much. I really appreciate the love and support. What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.